welcome to this episode of Monster Men. I'm Jack Campisi and this is Hunter Che. Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> In deference to my hat. Well, partner, <laughs> uh, today we're going to talk about something uh, near and dear to both our hearts, paranormal media, television shows, podcasts, books, whatever it is, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk a lot about the ghost TV shows and... Para-TV. Para it's own category now. Nice. Um, so let's let's jump right into that. Um, let's go back a little bit. Uh, when we were kids, hmm. in search of... Was there electricity? Yeah. Was, yeah. When we were flying kites to like, discover electricity. In search of... And, and shows like that were the big... In search of was the scariest show ever when I was a kid. Leonard it's still Nimoy. kind of is as an adult. You know, and they would, you know, is Bigfoot real, the Lock Bermuda Mr. Triangle, Monster. all that stuff. But now we've gotten to this where people grab a video camera and they go to an abandoned hospital and they walk around for a night and with the, you know. Their audio recorders and, and their EMF meters. EMF meters. And everything else. And the show Ghost Hunters on sci fi kind of launched a generation of people who now call themselves ghost hunters. I was on the train going to New York and there was a girl sitting there with a camera and she was showing her friends how they went on an investigation and that she, she thinks there was shadow people. Oh God, yeah. And I'm going, are you kidding me? And yeah, it, it did take the belief in ghosts and the, the want to maybe look into ghosts out of the way, way back in the closet. Now, it's kind of cool to say uh, I've, either I've seen a ghost or, oh yeah, I investigate ghosts and I go through graveyards, which was just unheard of up until eight years ago. So wh what shows uh, are there and which ones do you like? Obviously there's Ghost Hunters. You know, Ghost Hunters was the original. They are the gold standard. Uh, you have to watch everything with a grain of salt because you understand it's television. Um, but as far the characters, I've grown to like the characters a lot. We met the two main guys from Ghost Hunters. Yep. Who were super nice. They're really nice guys. Over the years, I mean, over the years I've talked to a couple of them too, you know, through different channels. Uh, really nice, genuine people. Uh, you know, and they're not in complete control of the show. One thing that Jack and I did learn when we talked to them was that um, for every episode that you see, they investigate anywhere from eight to ten different places until they get an episode that's TV ready. There's an episode of Ghost Hunters where they go to a, a lighthouse and like you see this thing look over the rail. St. Augustine. And they hear a voice, help me, or something like that. It's the best episode of Ghost Hunters. Absolutely. And when we met these guys, we were like, how the heck do you leave a place like that? And they said, well, sometimes we're there for like three days and we just make it, we edit it to look like We've only been there for one day because there can mm -hmm. be hours where nothing happens. Which is, I guess, why they wear those Taps t-shirts, because they can just bring like <laughs> three yeah. or four, or just slap them on over their uh, shorts or whatever, and they're good to go, and it looks like the same day. Now, there was a Fox show, like Scariest Places on Earth or something like that, mm -hmm. the, the woman from Poltergeist, uh, <laughs> yes. the, the little short psychic, she like narrates it, and there was one they did about the Jersey Devil, and I watched it. And the te these people, like in New Jersey, had a website where we the Jersey Devil Hunters or something like that. And I remember watching it and going, I'm going to look up that website later. So the next morning, I look them up, and there was a couple of things that happened in the show where, like, you saw some eyes in the woods and you heard some noises and stuff like that. And when I got to their website, it said, Want to see what, ha want to hear what really happened that night in the woods with Fox? Right. And they basically said that. The Fox guys were hiding in the woods making noises, oh. they edited things in, and that they they bullcrapped you. Um, right. Oh, that's horrible. So, that leads me to the, if you're going to have a TV show about ghosts, if you and I go and investigate ten houses, the chances are there's going to be ten places where nothing happens. Odds are you can go to a hundred houses and nothing's going to happen. It's, it's, it's a tough uh, road because this stuff, A, doesn't exist. I don't know. I've had an experience of my own, and I feel strongly that happened. Uh, is it as prevalent as these shows would make you think? Because the way, if you watch these shows, it's everywhere. And it's instant. And here's one thing that I've figured out. And if you watch uh, Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, which is, you know, Ugh. Meathead screaming at ghosts, uh, Paranormal State, Ghost Lab, 
there's just endless. Now, what Ghost Adventures, first time I ever saw that, I dozed off on the couch, and it was the middle of the night, and I woke up, and that show was on. And as I'm watching it, a brick flew across the room. Oh, yeah, the original. The first yeah. one. And I just snapped at attention, because something that drastic never happens on these shows. Usually it's just something moves a little bit, or... Right. Or you they hear something, tape. but you don't hear anything because they have sound effects going on right. over the tape anyway. But then the more I watched it show, the more I was like, okay, every time these guys film something, something humongous happens. Maybe they have the key where you have to have a pumped up Guido screaming to kick some ghost ass. Maybe that's what everybody needs to do. But as I was saying, one thing I, I figured they should do, if you watch all these shows, they get almost nothing on video. Almost nothing. They get nothing on camera. They're all snapping still shots. I have yet to see a still shot of anything in any of these shows. So what? the only thing they get anything on is audio. Throw out all the other stuff. Throw out the EMF readers and just line them up with audio detectors. Let me give you an example of something. Boo! Did you just catch a ghost on audio? I think someone just said you. <laughs> Wait, I think they just said I want to kill you. Yeah, so I the the audio thing is cool, but I don't entirely trust it um, either. The paranormal state, they're the ones that they're having seances, and you hear noises all over the place, and they seem the most full of crap out of all of them. Although the most haunted show from England actually got exposed, I believe. That was by far the most full of crap. Although I think that was the one, I used to watch that, I and mean, used to love it. But that also had psychics. I, I think when you start bringing psychics in, you're starting to get kind of weird and they're all uh, so many of them are saying we're being scientific about them there isn't a single scientist on any one of those right none of them are using a true scientific record so I'm not watching these things to say oh I'm getting proof of something I'm watching them for the sheer entertainment because I would rather watch that than the other reality crap that's out there and the you know Snooky exactly. now we have a friend who used to be a photographer for a paranormal group and he told me 80% of what these people were selling was, was BS. Mm -hmm. He said another 10% was kind of creepy, but probably explainable. And then he said there was 10% that was genuinely scary. He saw a screwdriver fly across a room. He saw sparks flying out of a ceiling or something like that. Yeah, I mean, and 10% and is enough to go on. 10% is enough, but you know, he said there's a lot of long nights in attics with a camera where nothing really happened, right? Um, and so, but you you know you're right. If you're if you enjoy watching the TV show, that's all they care about. They it's a, you know, they need to sell more Tide. Uh, yeah, and to me, give me you know give me the night vision. As soon as I see the night vision, I'm in my element. But the thing that you and I had agreed on was that the probably the the paranormal show that we like the most isn't on television. It's a podcast. Oh, absolutely. Um, the best paranormal show on. The Paranormal Podcast with Jim Harold, which um, Jim Harold got a whole bunch of uh, podcasts. He's got the Paranormal Report, which is a YouTube or video podcast. If you go to jimharold.com, and his last name is H-A-R-A-L-D, I believe, he's got free podcasts, he's got paid for podcasts, he's doing podcasts on mysteries. He's got um, a campfire where people call in and give their stories. And the interesting is he's kind of like us in that I don't completely buy it, but I've got an open enough mind to listen to it. Right. And he'll have some crazy people on. Absolutely. And he'll interview them with the same seriousness as, you know, some, some scientists. Right. And he'll interview skeptics, and he'll give the skeptic a full 45 minutes to an hour to express their opinion. Uh, and, that, and that's the way you need to be. You need to be very... When they say when you're going into paranormal, you have to be open-minded to anything, well, be open-minded to the fact that maybe there's nothing. And I think too many people go in there saying, My, I'm being open-minded because something's going to happen. Well, yeah, either you want to be skeptical and shoot everything down, or you want to believe so much that you're, you're looking for things that and aren't you're desperate really to find anything. But, yeah, so... I will tell you, though, if you want to have an experience, if you go to Barcelona and you go to the Hotel Gran Via, stay in one of those little rooms... Uh, yeah, let's close with your story. Yeah, I went, I went there for business, and uh, my first night in the room, uh, you walk in the door, and there's the bathroom, and then you take two steps in this little tiny hallway, and there's a door with a glass partition, glass, glass window in the top, and you go into a room that's about the size of a monk's quarters, and I could barely, the bed barely fit in it. 
Uh, and I went in there, and I uh, had the door open leading into the room, and I literally just sat down on the bed, and I put everything on, and I wasn't going to sleep, I was just, there was nowhere else to go in the room, there wasn't chairs or anything, uh, and I was going to just, you know, sit there for a bit before I go out and explore, and I feel something like hands grab my foot and then pull me. And I, my leg went down a little bit. When you described this story to me, you had me stick out my hand. And I and like grabbed, grabbed my like hand that, hard. Like that. That. I was like, what? <laughs> this wasn't a, a light diaphanous kind of thing. This was a solid feeling on my foot that pulled me. And then when I jerked up and started screaming cursing, the door into the room slammed shut. And I proceeded not to sleep for the rest of the night or my entire time there. I slept on benches in the different plazas during the day. When he was off, this is in Spain, I emailed him back from the States, how's your trip going? And he just wrote to me, horrible, uh, something like, a ghost grabbed my foot last night or something. And I was staring at my screen, and I'll never forget when you got back, I grabbed you. <laughs> Start talking! Yeah, that was definitely the freakiest thing ever. I don't mind seeing a ghost, I don't mind hearing a ghost, just don't touch me. I don't want, I don't want a person to come touch me when I'm laying down, much less something I can't see, so... I was terrified, and that literally solidified my belief that there's something else out there, and just set me. It literally it changed the way I live my life. Maybe a little quick. I'm wearing a big strawberry cowboy hat, so I'm really not too smart. <laughs> but I mean, literally, it changed everything the, the way I think of the world here and the afterlife. So with that, we'll close. So uh, sweet dreams tonight, and uh, maybe keep the covers over your feet tonight. Uh, and uh, we'll see you for the next episode of Monster Men. Keep the cloak, the thing tucked. <laughs>